Um, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel once again. All right, I'm going to be taking you through physics practical, um, or tiny, um, physics practical optics. Okay, um, this practical is all about how you can manipulate the optics. All right, to get accurate results. Remember what I do. Okay, I give you a way to get accurate results without conducting the experiments. Are you getting it? That is what I do. You manipulate to get accurate results. Being that um, uh, these physics practices, they follow a particular principle, okay? So you have to conduct the experiments, and then um, you get your experimental results, plot your graph. Then uh, when they are marking your scripts, they are going to judge you based on how your experiment, okay? All right, how your experiment was able to follow the principle that is guiding that what experiment. Are you getting it? So if your experiment is very close to the principle guiding it, then you are accurate enough. Do you understand? So what I do, I provide a way to um, I provide a way to um, um, to follow the I just follow the principle directly, do you understand? Without having to conduct the experiment. I use the principle guiding that experiment to get results. So definitely, okay, when I'm using the real principle, okay, which they are using to grade you uh, people, I guess it's grade your practicals. You find out that was there is no way it must fall in line. I guess it's that is why this method gives a much more accurate value than people that actually conduct the experiment and it saves your time because in, in anything that has to do with physics practicals, chemistry practicals, time is like a gold. Okay, time, time is more precious than diamond. Are you getting it? So um, that is why this is very, very, very important because um, when you conduct the experiment, the more time you spend to conduct the experiment, the, uh, uh, you, you have to observe some things, you have to get some readings. You, you observe that these things take time. Are you getting it? Uh -huh. And the time given for this experiment, for this uh, um, practical, is very, very limited. And that is why I have to provide a way that you can just use calculations to get your values. Get your table within the next few minutes and then you are done with your table and then you plot your graph. All right? So I'll be taking you through how to manipulate physics practical, okay? Optics practical to get accurate results, all right? Yeah, um, before we go into the practicals and the manipulation, we want to talk about the theory of the um, process, okay? I want to talk about theory of optics practical, all right? Theory, all right? Um, we have lenses, okay? All right, because the practical is based, is hinged on lenses. Do you get it? Um, um, the, um, the optics practical in Y2021 is based on refraction through lenses. Okay, a lens is a transparent object with curved sides for converging or diverging light rays, okay? All right, the lens is a transparent object, okay? That has curved sides, do you understand? And the major function of the transparent object is what? To either converge, okay, rays of light or diverge rays of light. Am I communicating, okay? All types of lenses has the ability to refract parallel rays of light that passes through them, okay? It can refract it, okay? All right, so parallel rays of light just incidents on the what on the on the passes through the uh, lens, and as it is passing through, what happens? It is either being converged or it is what diverged. Converged means what? It gathers it, it brings it, it focuses it to a particular point. That is the meaning of converging. Okay, diverge to diverge means what? To what? To make it what separate. Do you understand? To scatter it. Okay, in order for it to what? To move towards different direction. In both cases, there is a refraction, there is a change in direction. First of all, the rays are coming parallel, okay? So for a converging lens, it's what? It's focusing, it brings them together, okay? Why a diverging lens scatters them away from a point. Do you understand? So the type of lens depends on the pattern of refraction or pi rays of light when they incident 
on the lenses. Are you getting it? Do you understand? When the incident on the lens, the kind of the kind of lens depends on the, the refraction pattern. Okay, whether it will converge it or it will diverge it. Okay, refraction is the change in the direction or speed of light as it passes from one medium to another of different density. Okay, you observe that the lens itself is a medium, while air is a medium. So, light is traveling from air to the lens, okay? So, the lens is a medium, air is a medium, and both of them are, have different optical densities, okay? So, because of the different optical density, there is what? There is refraction, okay? So, light will, tra will, will change its direction, to so change its speed when it is traveling from what? From one medium to another. And both of them are of different optical density all right so the refraction itself is it is the change in the direction or speed of light as it's passing from one medium in this case air to another medium of different density in this case lens do you understand um now as the parallel rays of light incidents on the lenses they change their directions as they pass through it, okay? All right, because of the difference in dens optical density, because of the difference in optical densities, you find out that what? As the light is traveling from air to the lens, okay? They change their direction, okay? All right? Now, there are two types of lenses, okay? These are converging lens and di diverging lens, okay? All right? A converging lens is also called convex lens, okay? A converging lens is also called convex lens, okay? While a diverging lens is also called what? Concave lens, okay? For the 2021 YEC, the type of lens that would be used is a converging lens, that is a convex lens, okay? All right? The one that they use, okay? What was, we, we, we um, be a convex lens, okay? The one that is the one that will, um, that will converge priorities of light, okay? That will bring it directly, redirect it towards a point. Are you guessing it? A convex lens is also called converging lens because it tends to converge, okay? It's converge parallel rays of light, okay? That incidence on its surface towards a point. It brings all the light towards a point. Are you getting it? You will see it in the next slide. Now you can see the um, the pattern of refraction. Those are you see the parallel rays of light by the arrow. You see the how parallel the rays were. Are you getting it? All right. These are parallel rays of light. Do you understand? And then when immediately they touch the lens, okay, immediately they, they strike in the lens, they pass through the lens. What happens? They change their direction and they, they are they are being converged. Okay, they are converged towards the point. Are you getting it? Do you understand? So the, to, to converge rays of light means to direct them towards a point after the incident on its surface. Okay, you can see how it is there, all right? After the incident on the surface of the, of the lens there, as you can see, are you getting it? There is what? There, they converge, it, they, they converge, they, they come towards a point, okay? They meet at a particular point afterwards, refraction. Okay, so the change in direction of each rays, okay? towards the point is what we call the refraction, okay? Refraction through these lenses, okay? So this is the kind of lens that is coming out for the, this 2021 work, all right? All right, a converging lens or a, convex, or a convex lens, okay? Now, we are going to um, the terms used in lenses, okay? The terms, the terms used in lenses, okay? Now, the center of the lens, okay? The center of the lens is called optical center. Optical center, it is denoted as C. We label it as C. If you look at the lens, how it is, it's middle. It's center, I guess it's, okay? It's called what, the optical center. Okay, take note of that. It's, we denote it as what, as C. Okay, now the principal axis is an horizontal line, okay? An horizontal line that passes through the what, the optical center, okay? An horizontal line that passes through the optical center, and it is parallel to parallel rays of light. Or the, if you observe the um, the rays of light, how the, the pattern, okay, they are parallel to each other, okay? So um, the 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 horizontal line, okay, that's what that passes through the center of the 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 the, the, the lens, and also um, parallel to other parallel rays of light that, that are trying to incident on the what on the lens, okay? That is what we call what. That is what we call um, the principal axis, okay? The principal axis is an horizontal line passing through 
the center of curvature, okay? Do you understand? Which is passing through this optical, I mean, this, the optical center of the what, of the lens. Do you get it? All right? So that is what we call what? The um, principal axis, okay? Then we have the principal focus. The principal focus is the point where all the rays of light meet after refraction through the lens, okay? After they've passed the, the, the lens, okay? It is, it, it, they meet at a particular point, okay? So we say it's C3 because the, all the light passes through it. Do you understand? Then the distance between the principal focus and the center of curvature is what we call the, the focal length of the lens, okay? Do you understand? The focal length is the distance from the center of cover, the, the obstacle center to the what, to the principal focus. Are you getting it? Then there is a point further from the lens and on the principal axis, denoted as 2f. Okay? The distance from C to F is equal to the distance from F to 2F. You will see it, I will, you will see a diagrammatic representation. Now we are still talking about the terms used in lenses. Okay, the first, um, the next is um, um, u, okay, which is the object distance. Okay, it is the distance from the lens to the object. Okay, from the object to the lens. Are you getting it? From the object to the lens. You know, the lens is the object is standing in front of the object. Okay. The um, object is standing in front of the lens, okay? The object is, is in front of the lens, okay? So from the, distance, the distance from the object to the lens is what we call object distance, and it is denoted as U, okay? Now, um, lenses forms images of objects placed in front of them, of course. Are you getting it, okay? The object is in front of the lens. Are you getting it? So we, we place the object in front of the lens, then the image will be formed, okay? okay in the lens okay all right to investigate the um the uh, image formed by a lens you use a screen okay to, for you to know the position where the image is formed okay the this the position from the lens where the image is formed okay you use make use of screen okay do you understand so they say lenses forms images of objects placed in front of them these images may be erect, may be erect, that is standing erect, okay? Um, that is the head up, the leg down. Are you getting it? That is erect. Inverted is the head down, the leg up. Are you getting it? That is the head down, the bottom up. Are you getting it? That is inverted. But erect is talking about the, the head up and the bottom down. Are you getting it? So these images may be erect or inverted. It may be diminished. When they say an image is diminished, it means it is smaller than the object, okay? When they say it is diminished, it means what? it is smaller than the object, okay? Or it can be magnified. Magnified means what? Larger than the object, okay? And also it can be real or virtual. Real means um, a real object is an object through which light truly passes. I got this. Okay, light truly passes through a real object. Do you understand? And another thing about a real object is that what the a real object can be formed on a screen. Okay, like in this practice, you are going to be using the screen. Do you get it? A real object will be formed on the screen. Do you understand? But a virtual object cannot be formed on the screen. You cannot catch a virtual object, um, virt virtual image on a screen. Do you understand? So a real image can be formed on a screen, but a virtual image cannot be formed on the screen. Why will a virtual image not be formed on the screen? Because the image, the light does not truly really pass through the image, but appears to pass through it, okay? So when light does not truly really pass through an image, but appears to pass through it, the image is said to be virtual, and that kind of image will not be formed on the screen. Do you understand? So it, can, it might be real, it might be virtual. Now they said the distance from the lens to the image formed is called the image distance, okay? The distance from the lens to the image formed is called what the image distance, okay? So um, um, the, the object is at the front of the, uh, uh, um, is at the front of the um, lens, okay? While the image is, at the other side of the lens. Are you getting it? So the distance from the image to the lens now is called what? The image distance. It is denoted as V. The distance from the object 
to the lens known as is known as what the object distance is noted as what as u okay now the ratio of the image distance to the object distance is called what the magnification okay the ratio of the image distance okay to the object distance that is v over u okay the ratio of the image distance to the object distance is called what um magnification are you getting this it, and it's denoted as m mathematically m is equal to v over u i hope i am making sense okay m is equal to v over u take note of this formula it is going to as it is going to help you during manipulations now you can see the diagram there you can see the two diagrams there convex lens okay um the object you can see the object there in form of a pencil are you getting it all right placed um in front of a lens you can see the lens there okay and then look at the image the real image formed there okay in that in this case the image is real you can see from your from the indication the object is standing on the principal axis okay you can see the principal axis there okay the horizontal line that passes through the center of the of the um, lens okay you can see it there all right so that is the principal axis standing on the principal axis okay so you can see the image how inverted it is it is real because the light coming from the image after refraction from the object after refraction okay passes truly passes through where the image is from do you understand so you can see that in that place you have a real image and it is inverted not erect are you getting it mm -hmm. all right so that is a schematics okay from the distance if you look at it now from the object to the lens you have the image object distance then from the lens to the image you have the word the image distance do you get it okay um you see on still under the terms used okay uh -huh. the magnification of the lens is mainly used to know how large okay how large the image form is formed the image formed is okay all right it is used to know how large okay or magnified i guess in this we can use the magnification to know if the image if the image is larger than the object if the image is smaller than the object of or if the image is of the same size as the object okay as such it is the ratio of image heights sometimes we call it what image size i guess it's the ratio of image heights image heights image size they are the same thing but they are measured in terms of the height of the image okay how tall the image is that is from the distance of the top of from the of the from, um, that is the distance from the top of the image to the bottom of the image do you understand that is the height of the image okay to the object height or object size okay all right so the height of the image divided by the height of the object will still give us magnification so we have two relationships for magnification we have magnification equal to what image distance all over object distance and we also have what magnification magnification equal to what image height all over what object height do you understand how do we now use use this magnification to check how large or how small an image of an object formed by what by a convex lens is okay now a magnification greater than one indicates that the image is larger than the object okay when the magnification is greater than one you know that what the image is the image size is what is more than the object size that is the image is larger than the object that is we call it what it is magnified are you getting it but when a magnification is less than one okay this indicates that what that the image is smaller than the object okay do you understand that maybe it is zero point something do you get it 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.9 this one these values are what are less than one are you getting it? so when the magnification assumes a, a value less than one that means what the up the image is smaller than the object okay that means we say the image is diminished okay so a man a, a magnification equal to one shows that what the image size is equal to the object size are you getting it now mm -hmm. Okay, now you can see um, the summary of what we are talking about, the terms used in um, 
in lenses okay you, you can see the focal point the focal point is also called what the principal focus are you getting it so it is the point where light rays converge that point okay the optical center okay is neither as c c okay well in this diagram you can see it as o but in in physics why physics is neither as c do you understand then the principal axis you see the line through the principal the optical center you see and um the focal points do you understand and it's parallel you can see that the principal axis is what is is prior to other priorities of light that was that coming towards it was towards the lens are you getting it all right so and that is that about that okay mm -hmm. now i want to introduce you to the mirror formula the mirror formula okay the mirror formula gives the relationship connecting the focal length f the focal length of a of a of a lens f f the image distance v okay you know the image distance is v the distance from the image to the lens is v and then the object distance to you so the mirror formula is a, is a relationship that connects f v and u okay all right you can see the formula there one over f is equal to one over u plus one over v okay in this formula anything virtual takes um, takes a negative sign. I guess in anything virtual. Fortunately, this is a convex lens, and the, for a convex lens, the focal length is all is real. The principal focus is real, so the focal length is what is positive. Okay, all right. The focal length is what is positive. Do you understand? Okay. Uh -huh. For um, the U, which is the object, the object is always real now, so you always have it as positive. Okay, the object distance will always be positive. Do you understand? Now the v is what determines okay all right mostly um, in this experiment now the object will you'll be asked to place the object in front of the words the lens are you getting this all right they will give you the distance okay they will tell you um maybe assume that the image distance is maybe 30 centimeter am i communicating mm, maybe 30 centimeter do you get it so you are going to measure 30 centimeter from the lens and place your your objects there are you getting it? So the objects will always be real. So the image, when you're applying the um, the uh, mirror formula, you take the object distance as positive, okay? The principal focus for this experiment, you are using a convex lens, okay? And the focal length will be 15 centimeter. For a convex lens, the focal length is always positive because why? Why? The principal focus for a convex lens is real, okay? So it will be positive, all right? So what we are going to be doing they will tell you place the object at the front of the lens at the so and so distance from the lens and then they will not tell you to adjust the screen until a sharp image is formed okay all right of course where the image where, where the um, a sharp image will be formed on the on, on the screen at the back of the lens is that that is the place that is the point where the image is formed are you getting this so that the distance from that point so the lens is what called what? the image distance, which is V. Okay, so you will be asked to place the object at a particular distance from the lens, and then you are going to start adjusting the um, screen to know to notice where the object will be formed. Are you getting it? Where the I mean where the image will be formed? Are you getting it? Then you are now required to calculate the what the distance from this point where the image is formed, which point you discovered. Okay, where the image is formed to the lens that will be what that will be the v they might use any letter any alphabet to what to denote it just to confuse you but in physics that is v so what you are actually basically getting in this experiment is v okay so after adjusting it uh, you get that is experimentally okay but in this experiment i'm going to teach you how to manipulate it okay it is this actual formula, this mirror formula, one over f is equal to one over u plus one over v. That is you what you use to manipulate it. No matter what they denote as f, no matter what they denote as u, just so that u is a distance from what? From the um, 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 object to the lens. That is your aim. Okay? They might note it as x, they might note it as w, they might note it as s. Anything they note it as, just know that what? Anything, they, they, if you look at the, the diagram, the distance from the world, from the object to the lens is your what? Object distance. And that is what you are going to put as you in this formula, okay, when you are manipulating. Because normally you are supposed to put, place it at a particular distance from the lens, okay? All right? You are to, going to place it what? At, at, at a particular distance from the lens. Then 
when you place it at that distance from the lens, you are supposed to experimentally, if you are supposed to do it experimentally, you are supposed to adjust the screen until a sharp image is observed. That is the position where the object the image will be formed. Okay, is formed. So you are not going to measure, use a meter to measure from that point where the image is sharpest in the on the screen, okay, to the lens. That will be your V. But what I'm teaching you here, here is how to manipulate it. I guess it. You use this formula. Put your F. I told you your F will be 15 centimeter. Put your F as 15 centimeter here. Put your U. Okay, whatever they use as U there, whatever it is, it's C U in physics. Okay. So in your rough book, you are going to put U there. Okay. Maybe they tell you place this thing at, at a distance of 40 centimeter from the lens. That means U will be 40. Okay. Then you make V the subject of formula to get the value of V. Are you getting it? That is just basically the manipulation, okay? But you might likely need the first the first um, um, formula, which is m equal to v over u. Are you getting it? That is when probably um, you need the magnification. Do you understand? Okay, to get v or something, or maybe they will ask you to find the image height or object height. Can you need the m equal to image height of our object height to what to solve your answer, or possibly? Anything is possible. Do you understand? Okay. Basically, you are going to use formula to get your V. After getting your V, maybe they will ask you to find the image height now. Are you getting it? Do you understand? So use your M equal to V over U to get your M. Are you getting it? Then when you get your M, use M equal to what? IH, that is image height over object height to get your what? To get your image height. Because of course, they will also tell you to what? To measure the height of the object. Okay, so after getting the height of the object, you put it in that M equal to IH over um, um, OH, okay, to get your IH, okay, because you would have gotten magnification already from v, M equal to V over U. Do you understand? Then you put it there and get your IH. That is basically what this experiment is. There's not, not, nothing else they want to tell you, okay? So in this formula, anything virtual, take it as negative, okay? For example, when the question says that the image is virtual, then the image distance has to be negative when applying it in the formula. Luckily, we most likely wouldn't need this. Okay, we don't need the um, image. Whether image if the image is virtual, when you solve solve for v in this mirror formula, you get a negative value. Though it is rare, are you getting it? Do you understand? So you don't need to bother about whether virtual is v, whatever. whatever. If you, you if you get a negative sign of v, that means the image is virtual. Do you understand? Do you get it? So you don't need to bother about. Now, before we go into uh, manipulations, we want to solve some questions. Okay, all right. They said an object six centimeter height high. That means that means the height or size of the object that is OH is what six centimeter was placed nine centimeter in front of a convex lens. Okay, of course that is what your object distance. Okay. 9 centimeter in front of a convex lens. Okay, the object was placed 9 centimeter in front of a convex lens. That means your U is equal to 9 centimeter. Okay, if the magnification of the lens is 1.2, okay, this is a magnified image. Okay, the magnification is more than one, so it is 1.2. Okay, M is 1.2. That is magnification. Find the height of the image. That is, we are looking for what image height IH. Okay, also, also the distance of the image from the lens as well as what um, you you also find what the distance of the image from the lens as well as the what as the focal length of the lens okay all right we are looking for image distance v and the focal length of the lens f are you getting it now this is the solution solution to work example one you see, from what I said, the OH, which is the object's height, is what, 6 centimeters? The, the image, the object distance is what? It's 9 centimeters. The magnification is 1.2, okay? We are looking for image height, okay? Now, we know that what? M is equal to what? IH over OH, okay? And we have M already and OH, is it not? So, we use that to get our IH, okay? So, M is 1.2 equal to IH over OH is 6, okay? So, when you cross multiply, you have what? IH equal to 1. 0.2 times 6, which is equal to 7.2 centimeter. That means the image height will be what? 7.2 centimeter. That is, the image size will be 7.2 centimeter. Okay? Now, we want to find the image distance, which is what? V. Okay? Alright, we still use this, this formula. M equal to V over U. Okay? So, um, M is already 1.2. V, we are looking for V over 
object distance. They say it's displaced nine centimeters from the what from the lens. Okay, so the object distance is what nine centimeter. Okay, all right. So and that is it. Okay, so it will be what one point two times nine. Okay, all right. You know you cross multiply now. Okay, so one point view now we got to one point two times nine, which is what ten point eight centimeter. Okay, now to find f. Okay, you want to find the focal length of the what of the lens. You use what your mirror formula, okay, which is what? 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v, okay? All right, so 1 over f is equal to 1 over 9, okay? u is what? 9, okay? So 1 over 9 plus v is what? One, um, 10 over 10.8, okay? So 1 over 10.8 centimeter, okay? So when you do that, 1 over 9 is 0 0.1111, okay? Plus 1 over um, 10.8 is what? 0 0.09259, okay? So when you add both of them, you have what? 1 over f is equal to 0 0.2037, okay? So that means um, 1, if you cross multiply, you have 1 equal to 0 0.2037f. Okay, our f will now be equal to what? 4.9 centimeter, okay? All right, that is how you solve a question like that. Um, we see worked example two, okay? And uh, an object placed seven centimeter from a convex lens, okay? Of course, the object distance u will be what seven centimeter all right of focal length 14 centimeter the focal length of this lens now okay for this question now is 14 centimeter okay forms an image 20 centimeter tall. that means that the image height or the image size i guess it's ih is what 20 centimeter okay find the image distance okay find the image distance that means we're looking for v Find also the magnification of the lens, okay? We are looking for M, as well as the size of the object, that is the object height, which is OH, okay? All right, that is what we are asked to look for. Now, we have the solution to work to example two, okay? Um, U equal to seven centimeter, F equal to 14 centimeter. U is the object distance, okay, which is seven centimeter as the question suggests, then F is 14 centimeter, which is what, the focal length, okay? Then IH is the image distance, which is what, 20 centimeter, as the question suge suggests, okay? So from the relationship, we want to get our, um, um, we want to first of all get our V, okay? Do you understand? The V, the image distance, okay? We use the formula, one over F is equal to one over V plus one over U. Okay, our F is 14 centimeter, so it's one over 14 is equal to, 1 over v, v is what we are looking for, remember, plus 1 over 7, 7 is what, um, is the u, okay, the object distance, okay, so from there you collect like them, 1 over 14 minus 1 over 7 is got to 1 over v, okay, that is carry plus 7, plus 1 over 7 to the other side, to the left hand side, you have what, it changes from plus 1 over 7 to minus 1 over 7, okay, then you find the SM, the SM is 14, okay, 14 in 14, 1, 1 times 1 is 1, okay, 1 minus 7 in 14 is 2. 2 times 1 is what? 2. So it's 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 1. So we are left with what? Um, minus 1 um, over 14. Okay? We are left with what? Minus 1 over 14. That will now give us um, what you are seeing there. Okay, so that is what gives us um, 1 over V, okay? All right, so it gives you 1 over V. So our V um, will not be equal to, if you make V, v the square formula, you have what V equal to minus 14 centimeter, okay? Now you see that V, v is negative there, showing that what? The, um, the image is what? Is virtual. Do you understand? This is what I mean by that. This shows that the image is virtual. Actually, the image design is 14 centimeter, but that minus there is showing, is just, the minus there is just to show that what, the image is what, is a virtual image. Still on the solution for um, work example two, say to find magnification, we use the formula, okay? We use formula to find M equal to V over U, okay? So M is equal to what? Minus 14 over seven equal to minus two. Actually, the value of the magnification is what is two, okay? All right, the minus sign is also as a result of the image being virtual, do you understand? So it's actually two, okay? From the value of the magnification, we say the image 
is magnified. I guess it is, of course. The image is magnified because why? The the value of the magnification is what is greater than what is greater than one. Okay, that is it is larger than the what object. Okay, so we can confirm this by solving for the what for the um, for the object size. Are you getting it? Okay, if you observe, if you observe from the relationship, magnification is equal to what image height over what object height. Okay, so our if you if you solve the, for the object size, you put your values. Your m is minus two. Minus two is equal to uh, minus twenty. Okay, the of course the image height is twenty. Okay, so all of our object height. So object height will be if you cross multiply and divide both sides by minus two. You have what minus twenty over minus two. So the object height is what ten centimeter. You observe that what the object size is ten centimeter and the image size is twenty centimeter. So which means the image is great is larger than the what than the object. So everything agrees with what what you have in theory. All right. Now I want to talk about a case study. Okay. All right. Y two thousand and eighteen physics practical question two. Okay. If you go there, you see it. Okay. A case study. All right. This is what you should be expecting or similar to it, okay? Look at the diagram. Are you getting it? So take a look at the following diagram and draw it somewhere as we shall be needing it in the next few slides, okay? Take a look at it very well. You can see the ray box. The ray box, the essence of the ray box is to illuminate the object so that it will be visible on the screen, okay? Do you understand? All right, so that the image will be formed by the lens and this image will be formed on the screen. You can see the ray box, you see the object, the illuminated object there, as labeled. Then you see the lens there, okay? You see the lens, the lens, the focal, luckily for you, they indicated the words, the focal length of the words of the lens to be 15 centimeter. Are you getting it? Now, we, you are required to, um, 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 look at the experiment, set up the experiment, experimental um, um, apparatus as shown in the diagram, okay? Do you understand? And that, then the, you see that screen is at the back of the what? Of the lens, okay? You see that the distance from the object to the what? To the lens, they denote it as X here. But in reality, it is you. So when you are manipulating your rough book, okay? You take any value of X they gave you, you take it as you. Are you getting it? And then, luckily for you, they said the image distance here is V. Do you understand? Look at the screen. This distance from, of course, it is where the screen is that the object, the image will be formed. So from the image to the lens is what is V, as indicated by the diagram. So it is easily understood, okay? Now I believe you have drawn that diagram on a, on a, on a piece of paper or somewhere. Okay, then these are in the instruction. Okay, you are provided with a meter rule, lens, screen, ray box, and other necessary apparatus. Okay, now it says set up the experiment as shown in the diagram above. Okay, all right, in the previous slide. Do you understand? So measure and record the diameter alpha naught. Okay, alpha zero, alpha naught of the limited object, okay? The diameter is taking is, is acting as the size or the height of the image now, okay? Do you understand? The diameter is acting as what? As the size or height of the image. I mean, height of the object, alpha O, okay? Alpha naught. That O there, that subscript O is standing as the object, okay? So it's like the diameter of the object or the, the, the height of the object, okay? So it's going to be taken as what? Object height, OH. Are you getting it when you are manipulating? Do you understand? So they can use any letter to represent it. That doesn't concern you. What's your concern for you to know, for you to know what is standing as the height of the image, what is standing as the height of the object, what is standing as the image distance, and what is standing as what? As the object's distance. That is your aim. And then you use your mirror formula and the mag magnification formula to man manipulate anything they, they gave you, okay? Now they say place the object at a distance x equals to 25 centimeter. Of course, you know that x is you, okay? So x equals to 25 centimeter from the lens. Adjust the screen until a sharp image is obtained on the screen, okay? All right, all right, you have, you have to adjust the screen until a sharp image is obtained. Of course, when you place the, when, you are, when the screen is not at, at the point where the image is formed, there will be no image that will be formed on the screen, okay? It is when the screen is at the point where the image is formed, that is when you have an image being formed on the screen. So the point where the image is sharpest in, on the screen, that is where the image is formed. Do you understand? So now say measure and record the diameter 
alpha of the image. Do you understand? So from the image you are seeing on the screen, you'll be able to measure the diameter. That will be your, your image distance. Of course, you do not need um, um, a lot of um, work here, okay? You just use any of the two formulas, okay, as the case permits, to get your what, your image distance, okay? You don't need to start performing um, um, experiments. Am I communicating? You don't need to start, just use your any of the formula to get your what, your image distance. This alpha here is talking about, talking about your, your image height or the image size, okay? You use your magnification. Of course, since you, you, ha you have object distance, are you guessing this? You have object, I mean, you have object height, which is your alpha node that you must have measured. Do you understand? Every, the, you'll be provided with an object that very day, okay? So you have to measure the object's height, okay? Now, if you use M equal to IH over OH, okay? Try to get this alpha now, which is your image height. You need your magnification. Do you understand? Because you can, you, you, we don't have magnification, we don't have image height. So we need magnification to get the image height because we have the object height already, okay? So we'll now use M equal to V over U to we use V over U to get our what, our M. But then we have not calculated for V, right? We use we now use the mirror formula to calculate for our V. When we use the mirror formula to calculate for our V, because we have our focal length, which is 15 centimeter, okay? And remember, we have V now to be 25, okay? We can use that mirror formula to calculate our V. Then use that V over U to get the magnification. Then use magnification now to get our I age using what? M equal to I age over what? OH. This is just the, everything about this experiment. There is no big deal about it. Okay? So measure and record the, what, the distance V between the lens and the lens, okay, and, and, and the screen. Do you understand? Between the lens and the screen, you measure the distance, okay? Now, still on the question, evaluate Y equal to what? Alpha over alpha O. Okay? Evaluate I equal to what? Alpha over alpha O. Now, you remember that alpha is what? Is the image, um, is the is the um, image height, okay? Height of the image, okay? And alpha naught is what? Height um, of the objects. So you see that this, this Y is talking about magnification because what is it was is image height over what? Object height is magnification. So they say what? Find what? P equal to what? One plus Y square over Y. I got things. And T equal to what? X plus V, okay? find this, evaluate this, then they say, they say, repeat the experiment for X. Now, what you'll be changing in your manipulation now with value of U, every other thing remains the same. Do you get it? All right? Uh -huh. So X we got to what? 30 centimeter, 35 centimeter, 40 centimeter, and 45 centimeter respectively, okay? In each case, you have to determine the corresponding value of what? Alpha, V, Y, P, and C as indicated here, do you understand? They say tabulate your results, plot a graph of P on the vertical axis against T on the horizontal axis, starting both axes from the origin, okay? Determine the slope S of the graph, okay? Determine the intercept C on the horizontal axis, okay? Then they now say what? Evaluate K equal to C over two. Everything is a function of what? Of your manipulations, okay? Now let's get back to it, let's get down to it. Um, now let us, um, Take a look at the diagram of, again, okay? You see the diagram there? From the diagram above, you can see that the distance x from the illuminated object to the lens, I've studied before, is the object distance, right? So denoted in physics as u, okay? V in the diagram is also v in physics, okay? Which is the image distance, okay? All right, I've already explained all this to you. This is the distance from the lens to the point where the image produced on the screen is sharpest, okay? All right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we observe, okay, we observe that the diameter of the illuminated object, alpha naught, I've explained this one to you, to you, okay, is the same as the object size, okay, or the object height, denoted in physics as what, as OH, okay, okay, thus, so, thus, alpha naught from our experiment, OH in physics, is equal to OH in physics, do you understand? So, alpha naught is our OH, okay, in physics. Take note that the focal length of the length provided is what is 15 centimeter. Are you getting it? Do you understand? You have already been told about the what about the um, focal length. Are you getting it of the what of the lens? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to bother yourself. Okay, the focal length is what 15 centimeter. Okay, we will be asked to measure and record the value of of um, of um, alpha knots. That is the 
diameter or the size of the object. Do you understand? So, so note that any value of alpha naught is okay. However, try to use the one given by the physics teacher in your center, okay? Okay, in every center has an object, okay? If possible, you can measure it yourself, okay? Do you understand? Because this, this is because the, the, the teacher might provide the, this value in the what? In the report booklet. Are you getting it? So when, that will be used to grade everybody there. Do you understand? So no matter your manipulation, you must check the object size from the center, okay? The object that they provided for you, you can use the meter rule to just get their object size and then use it to what? To manipulate, do you understand? Take that one as what? As OH throughout the experiment. Okay, it is, it is the same throughout the experiment. What changes is what? Is the object distance, do you understand? The object size is the same object they are using, so the real size is always the same throughout the experiment, okay? This only applies when the need arises to measure the size of the object. Note that in this experiment, they might not necessarily use the symbol alpha naught to denote it. They might use another symbol, but note that what the diameter or the size of the object is what is, is, uh, uh, is, is required, do you understand? They might use, to deny, they might use anything to denote it, okay? So for this experiment, alpha naught, let's take it, let's assume that it is three centimeter, okay? So, Object height is what? Three centimeters, of course, okay? Alpha in our experiment is what? Is the um, diameter of the image, that is the image size. I guess it's, okay, in physics it is what? It is the image height or size. Do you get it? The as what? Image height, IH, okay? Lastly, during manipulations on your rough sheets, let the two relationships, M equal to V over U and one over F is equal to one over V plus one over U be your guide. These are the two formulas you are going to use to manipulate all your values. Do you get that? Now, you, you, you can see, for the first experiment, S is equal to 25 centimeter, of course. That is, our U is 25 centimeter. So in your rough work, you can use that U to get our V, okay, which is which will now be your, um, your image distance, which is your V in your experiments too, in this experiment too. They might use another value to denote it in this other, in this one you are expect, expect, expecting, okay, but for this one it is still V, do you understand? So when you use um, one, um, F is 15, okay, one over F is equal to one over V, plus one over u, u is 25, so one over 25. So we take 25 to the other side of the equation, okay? To the left-hand side, it becomes what? Minus 25, so minus 125, okay? Mi minus one over 25. So it's one over 15 minus one over 25, it's got to one over v, okay? So we find the SM, the SM is what, 75, okay? So 75, all right? Of course, 15 in, 20, in, in 75 is what? Is five, five times one is five, okay? 5 minus 25 and 75 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So we have 5 minus 3, okay? All right? So we have 1 over V is equal to what? 5 minus 3 is 2. So it's 2 over 75. So when you cross multiply, you have what? 75 is equal to 2V, okay? So when you divide both by 2, you have what? V is equal to what? That's the 7.50 centimeter. The reason I'm putting 50 is because um, I have to make sure that it's in, two it's in, it's in um, um, four significant figures. Four significant figures. Okay, all right, four significant figures. So that's why I made it four numbers there. Do you understand? So that's 5.50. I must maintain the same number of decimal places throughout for a particular variable. So if V is in two decimal places here, that means all other V will be was in two de decimal places. Am I communicating? So V is what? That is 7.50 centimeter. We are also asked to find the diameter. That is the image height, okay? The diameter of the image, that is the image height now, right? So to find the use of magnification, do you understand? M is equal to what? V over U, okay? You understand? So M is what? That's 7.5, which is what we've gotten, okay? Over the U, which is what? 25, okay? You got, you, you, if you do that, you get what? M equal to 1.5. Do you understand? Then we now use this magnification now to get our image heights using M equal to IH over OH. You see the manipulation there now. Do you get it? So, all right. So M is 1.5 because of IH over 3, okay? Because we asked to look for the image height. Remember that the image height is alpha. I guess it is. So that's why we are doing this. So you use it to get, use it to get, um, you, you get your image. This, the, the most important thing is that, you know that you are getting your image distance, okay? From your image distance, you get your what? Magnification using V over U. Then use your magnification to get your what? Your image height. Since you have already measured the what? The object height, okay? Using M equal to IH over OH, okay? 1.5 is equal to what? Image height all over 3, okay? You cross multiply, you have what? Image height will be equal to 1.5 times 3. Do you get it? So you get 4.50 centimeter. So our alpha will now be what? 4.50 centimeter. Am I communicating? 
Now, those that's the one. The previous one is what you do in your words in your rough book. Okay. Now, on your answer script, okay, you have to write alpha one. Okay, whatever the answer to denote for what denote your for your um, um, image height. I guess it is you put it. Now, the reason why you are writing this one first is because from your um, question they ask you to get alpha first i guess it that's why all those manipulation just get any anyone that is possible to get first get it from your manipulation but once you now get your answer script okay from the answer you got from your manipulation you start putting uh, um, the values according to how they ask you the one they ask you to write first you write it first do you understand do you get it? And using the, the alphabet, they used to denote whatever they used to denote there. Do you understand? Like in this place now, alpha one is what? 4.5 0 centimeter. As got has gotten from your words, from your experiment. So you are assuming that you actually measured the heights of the words of the object of the image. Do you understand? Then your V in your experiment, V is the image distance. So the, that's why I use V1 here. V1 is for that one there is for what is the first experiment. Okay. V1. Okay, we assume that we, you calculated it due to manipulation, but, okay, we are assuming, the YX is assuming that you measured it, okay, and you got a 7.50 centimeter. This, your, these values are actually very, very accurate, okay? You understand? Now, if you did the experiment, your value will be close to this. But this, this your um, values here will be more accurate than the experimental values, okay? Because the experimental values are prone to error, but calculation is by calculation. You are more, it is more precise. So you have your what, your accurate values. Do you get it? Okay, so then Y1, okay, they said, they gave you the formula to find Y1, okay? So you assume, you know Y1 is what, y, y, Y1 is what, your first, your magnification, of course. Do you understand? But they say you should calculate it, right, from the question. So you just do as if you calculated it here, okay? So you put your value of your um, uh, alpha, okay? All over what? Alpha naught, okay? Which is 4.5 all over 3, which is 1.50. Do you get it? So your P1, which is your P, remember they say P is got to what? Um, 1 plus Y square all over Y, right? So you put your 1 um, plus um, um, Y square all over Y. So 1 plus 1.5 square all over what? 1.5. Okay, when you calculate that, you get what? 2.1667. Okay, I use four decimal places to increase the accuracy. Do you understand? So our T, remember our T is what? V plus X or X plus V, as the case may be. Do you understand? So we use that to get our our X is what? For X1, okay? You record it to X1. And the one they gave in the experiment, so you put it down. That is X1 equal to what? 20, uh, 25 centimeters. So in this T1, now we got X1 plus V1, okay? So X1 is what? 25 centimeters plus 37.50 centimeters, which gives us what? 62.50 Now, um... For the second experiment, you know now, what changes is x. Every other thing still remains the same. So since x is the object distance, your u is 30 centimeter, okay? All right? Your u is, x is 30 centimeter, centimeter, so your u will be equal to what? 30 centimeter, okay? In your rough work, okay, you know now, use that one, uh, that u to get your v using your what? Your mirror formula, one over f is equal to one over v plus one over u. So one over f is, f is 15, of course. So one over 15 plus one over v, plus one over 30, 30, U is 30, okay? So when you do that, you collect like them, okay? You carry plus one over 30 to the left-hand side. You have one over 15 minus one over 30, okay? All right, you got one over V. So one over V will be got to, now, um, um, when you do that, you realize that um, and the SM is 30, okay? So 15 in 30 is two, two times one is two, two minus one. Okay, um, of course, how do you get 2 minus 1? 13, 31, 1 times 1 is 1. So 2 minus 1 is what? Is 1. So that's why I have 1 over V is equal to 1 over 30. Are you getting it? So when you cross multiply, you now have V equal to what? 30 centimeter, okay? All right? Then you, use your magnification. you now get your magnification first because you need that magnification to get your image height, okay? Do you understand? So M is equal to V over U, okay? So of, of course, V is 30, U is 30, okay? So 30 over 30, M is equal to 1. Do you understand? They will now use magnification to get our image height. Since our object size is C3, okay? So um, you cross multiply. Do you get it? Okay? After cross multiplying, you get your value, okay? 
All right. So when you cross multiply, you get um, IH is equal to what? Three centimeter. So our alpha will be equal to three centimeter. Now this is what you write on your answer script. Okay. Your alpha to equal to three point zero zero centimeter. Your V two equal to thirty point zero zero centimeter. Okay, as from your calculation, okay. Now, from the equation, you are required to calculate for the value of y, y two, okay. That is three divided by three, which is one point zero zero, okay. See that the, the y is still two decimal place, okay. As the first case, okay. The v here is what two decimal, decimal place, two, two decimal places, as the first experiment, and um, your alpha two is equal to um, is in two decimal places as the first experiment. Okay, also your P is got to 1 plus Y square over Y, okay? Alright, so you put that as 1 plus 1 square over 1, which is got to what? 2.0000, okay? Then your T2 will be got to what? Your V plus X, okay? Your X plus V, rather. Okay, that is 30 centimeter plus 30 centimeter, which is what? 60 centimeter, okay? That's what you write in your what? In your answer booklet. According to what they ask you, okay? After your manipulation, okay? All right, for your third experiment, what changes is your X, okay? Your X is now 35 centimeter. That makes your U to be 35 centimeter too, okay? Now, you use your what? In your rough work, you use your mirror formula. 1 over F is equal to 1 over V plus 1 over U, okay? All right, okay, your F still remains 15 centimeter. Your U this time around, your U this time around will be um, um, 35 centimeter, okay? So you put that there, you have what? 1 over 15 is equal to 1 over V plus 1, 1 over 35, okay? You carry 1 over 35 to the other side, it becomes minus 1, 1 over 35. So 1 over 15 minus 1 over 35 is equal to 1 over V. Okay, the SM of 15 and 35 is what? Is 105, okay? So when you say 15 in 105 is what? Is 7. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus, then 35 in 105 is 3. 3 times 1 is what? 3. So 7 minus 3 is what? 4. Are you getting so 1 over v is equal to what? 4 over 105. So when you cross multiply, you have what? 105 is equal to 4v. So you divide both by 4, okay? You get v is equal to 26.25 centimeter, okay? So your diameter is your diameter, okay? That is your image height, okay? Will be what? You need your m to get your image height, okay? So your m will now be equal to v over u. m is equal to what? 26 over 26.25, which is what your V, all over your U, which will be what your image, your object distance, which is what 35. So when you do that, you get what 0.75, okay? So from there, you use that 0.75 to get your what your image height, okay? You use 0.75 equal to what image height over object height, okay? So which will be what 0.75 is equal to what image height over 3, okay? 0.75 equal to image height over 3. So image height will now be what? 0 0.75 times 3, okay? Which will be 2.25 centimeter. So our image distance, our image height, which is what? Alpha, will be 2.25 centimeter, okay? Okay, um, on your book, you you know what you write now. Alpha 3 is equal to 2.25 centimeter. V3 equal to 26.25 centimeter. Also, your Y3, you are going to calculate for it, okay? So you have what? Cut to what? 2.25 over 3, which is 0 0.75. Okay, everything we must go along with what you have in your question and also according to how you solved in your manipulation. Okay, your P3 is got to 1 plus 0 0.75 square all over 0 0.75. So if you do that, you get 2.0833. Okay, all right. So if you do that, your T3 will now be what? 35 centimeter plus 26.25 centimeter. That gives us what? 61.25 centimeter. Okay. All right now your next x will be equal to what 40 centimeter okay all right that is your u is 40 centimeter okay you apply that your f remains 15 okay your u will not be 40 okay so you see 1 over 15 is got 1 over v plus 1 over 40. so carry my, um, plus 1 over 40 to the, the other side give you minus 1 over 40. so you find the sm between what 15 and 40 you give, is what is 120 okay so 15 in 120 is what 8 8 times 1 is 8 8 minus 14 in 120 is 3 3 times 1 is 3 so 8 minus 5 3 is what is 5 so we have what 1 over v is equal to 5 over 
120. So when you cross multiply, you have 120 is equal to what? 5V. So divide both by, v, by 5, okay? You get V equal to what? 24 centimeters. So to get our image height, we what? We use what? We get our magnification using V over U, okay? Let me go to V over U. So let me go to 20, 24 over 40. So our M will be equal to 0 0.6, okay? If you do that, then use that M to get your what? Your IH, your image height, okay? So when you do that, do it the same way. You will get what? 1.6. 80 centimeter okay so your alpha will be what 1.80 centimeter okay now um on your answer script okay uh, you write alpha for equal to 1.80 centimeter okay your v4 is 20, 24 centimeter you are required to calculate for your y4 which will 1.80 divided by 3 equal to what, 0 0.60. So your P4 will now be 1 plus 0 0.60 squared all over 0 0.60. If you calculate that very well, you get what, 2.2667. Okay? All right, from your T4, your T4 will now be what, your X is 40 centimeter plus U um, plus V is what, 24 centimeter. So that will give us 64 centimeter. Now, for the fifth experiment, you will see that uh, for, um, your S is equal to 45 centimeter, okay? So your U is what? 45 centimeter, okay? Your F still remains 15 centimeter, okay? And then your um, U is 45. So you have 1 over 15 is equal to 1 over V plus 1 over 45, okay? You carry 1 over 45 to the other side, become minus 1 over 45. So you have what? 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45 equals 1 over V, okay? So the SM is 45, of course. 15 in 45 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So you have 3 minus 50. 45 in 45 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 1 over V is equal to what? 3 minus 1 over 45. So 1 over V is equal to 2 over 45. So if you cross multiply, you have what? 45 is equal to 2V. Divide both by 2, you have V equal to what? 22.5 centimeter. So to get our IH, okay? We use we use our we get our magnification using what m equal to v over u. So m equal to what 22.5 over 45. So our m is equal to 0 0.5. So we use that now to get our what our um, IH. Okay. So when you do that, you get your your IH to be what 1.50 centimeter. So your alpha becomes what your 1.50 centimeter. Okay. Um, so on your answer sheets. Um, on your answer booklet, you write what um, alpha 5 is got 1.5 centimeter, v5 is got 22.50 centimeter. Okay, your y5, you have, you have to calculate for it, that is 1.50 divided by 3, which is 0 0.50, okay? So your p5 will now be equal to what, 1 plus 0 0.50 square divided by 0 0.50, okay? So that will give us 2.5000. You know, I put those three zeros just to make sure that it's in the same decimal place as the other ones, okay? So your T5 becomes what? 45 plus what? 22.5. That will give us 67.50 centimeter, okay? And that is it. And this now gives the table, okay? Your table should be according to what they ask you to look for, to determine the, what they, you are giving and what you are asked to determine. Now you ask, you are given X, okay, in centimeter. So your units must be very important. Your units must be indicated at the top of the columns. Do you understand? Your X is in centimeter. Your alpha is of course in centimeter. Your V is in centimeter. Your Y is in what? It's, it's, it's magnification, so it has no units because centimeter will cancel centimeter. And so you have your P, okay? Then you have your T, of course. Your T should be in centimeter too, okay? You see everything, all parameters are in the same decimal places. Are you getting it? Okay, the ones that are in two, we two, and the one that will be four, will be four. Do you understand? So that is your table, okay? All right, for you to plot your graph. All right, as it. Yeah, and that ends the class for optics, the manipulation for optics. The next thing is to plot your graph. Um, please do plot the graph. Um, I had in initially um, thought that I will, I will a kind of um, teach, release a video where I teach people how to plot graph, okay, the do's and don'ts in plotting graph. Why like physics graph has a pattern, okay, for maximum mark. Do you get it? So you should try as much as possible to plot the graph according to your rules, okay? I wanted to uh, kind of give, release a video for that, to that effect. Okay, all right, so what I decided not to do up until now, all right, 
um, if you don't know how to plot the graph, if you're having problems plotting physics graph, okay, I want to see it in the comment section, okay? You, you state in the comment section that you're having problems so that I will come and break everything down to the barest minimum, how you can plot graph, okay, and obtain maximum mark, okay, the rules and the regulations, are you getting it, and how to obtain your skill, your title, and every other thing, okay, so if indeed you don't know how to plot graph, okay, you give me in the words, in the comment section, so that I can um, know how to release a video, Okay, we will teach you and break everything down on how you can plot physics graph, any kind of graph. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. If this video um, actually uh, helped you, okay, please subscribe, share, comment, like, and do everything possible to what to get this to reach as many as possible. Okay, thank you very much and God bless you.